Social media enables you to stay in touch with family and friends and network with new contacts. But with the rise of selfies, and that's a term described as taking a self picture of you, usually with your cell phone, and then posting it online, it can lead to devastating results. Dr. Susan Whitbourne is an author and psychology professor at UMass Amherst, and she recently wrote a great article about this called Your Body on Display, Social Media and Your Self-Image. And now she's here to explain what she means by all of that. Dr. Whitbourne, thank you so much for talking to us about this. So start off, where did the idea for this article come about? I actually read an article in the New York Times last Sunday that talked about women in porn and how women um, kind of exposed, being exposed to uh, suggestive movies are not affected in their self-concept by seeing women objectified. And I thought there was something maybe more to it than that. And so I did a little digging and I found an article about how women do self-objectify more when they're exposed to images of women looking lascivious and provocative. Does it matter or does it differ according to their ages? Does it affect one age demographic more than another or is it just kind of all across the board? The study that you're referring to that I wrote about was on women who are 18 to 25 who I think are most vulnerable to this effect of self-objectification, which is defining yourself as an object, usually a sexual object, not as a person with emotions and feelings and thoughts. So I think that age group, when you're developing your identity, we call it emerging adult, it is particularly vulnerable, but I think it can affect older women perhaps even more because they're past their quote-unquote sell-by date and thought of as less attractive because they're older. Talk about the impact that this is having on social media, especially with the rise of selfies, where you take a picture of yourself and you put it online. Sometimes it's okay, sometimes maybe it's a little provocative, and especially the younger girls are doing this more often. How does that play a role in all this? I think it plays a huge role. Uh, we call that Facebook exhibitionism, where women put these, and it typically is women more than men, uh, put these provocative images of themselves on Facebook, and you wonder how, what are they thinking when they do that? Don't they realize it could come back to haunt them? But what happens is I think in the culture that we live in, it's not seen as bad. And, and young women especially can't really play out all the consequences of that behavior on their future opportunities. And it's almost like they're trying to gain acceptance from their friends or from maybe even people they don't even know if they're putting it on a public social networking site. They feel that need for acceptance and that though plays a role or could play a detrimental role in their mental health, especially at such a young age. Yes, that's right. And, and we could go on to the kind of crazy pictures people post of themselves and, and the kind of peer pressure and they think it's cool. But then if, if you get back down to your question, how does that make you feel about yourself? Um, the study that I had looked at had women talk about themselves, and it was really fairly open-ended. Describe yourself um, in statement, 20 statements, I am blank, or who am I? And then they answered that question. So if they'd been in a condition where they thought they were describing themselves to an online audience, and they had just been shown more provocative pictures of women, those self-statements were th emphasized beauty, using cosmetics, and, and trying to look attractive. And that's that self-objectification, -object which we know is detrimental to mental health because you're looking at yourself now as an object to be consumed by others rather than somebody who's satisfied with yourself in your own mind. And that we were talking off camera, and now we're going to talk about it now. A study just came out. I think it was the New York, yeah, the New York Film Academy did a study gender equality in film, and they were talking about almost 30 percent of women were sexually revealing attire on film or partial or were partially naked, opposed to seven or nine percent of men. And there was such a discrepancy in that. Do you think that plays a part in? the female generation or population looking at that saying, well, I see it on film, it must be okay, I need to be as cool as 
these film actresses that I see on TV. Do you think that plays a part in it? It absolutely does. It creates a, a kind of a mindset that this isn't not only how I could look, but how I ought to look. And, and then there's a kind of a loss of reality of the world out there, where if you dress like one of these Hollywood stars and start showing cleavage and um, other, other bodily parts, you are not gonna be taken as seriously by the men or women in your environment particularly your work environment. So there's a kind of a, it, it's, it's just ironic that women get driven to look at, to show themselves in these ways that then end up hurting them in terms of ratings of their competence as workers, as, as people in general. And it, the study also showed that, I think it was almost 20, 32% of um, teenage female nudity has increased over 32% from 2007 to 2012. So this isn't even just female actors or characters in general, this is teenagers themselves. So it's almost like it's reaching a, a, um, a different demographic even beyond, even below 18 year olds. A younger generation of girls are growing up feeling as if that they need to show off their body instead of their brain. And that, of course, like you mentioned earlier, affects their mental health. Talk about what are some of the deep probing questions that need to be asked when people read this article, what, is some, what are questions they need to ask themselves? I think you could ask yourself this very same question that they asked the participants in the study, who am I? and start to describe yourself and see what bubbles up to the top. Um, it's a really great, you know, we call it projective test where you kind of take a very vague uh, sentence to start with and see where that leads you. And as you start to see how many of your statements ref refer to not your, your competence or your emotional qualities, but your appearance, your outward appearance especially, and, and then even further, you're trying to look sexually appealing, um, you start to then see where in your own set of priorities you fall. It's definitely a topic that needs to be discussed, especially with the rise of social networking in the past couple of years, kind of putting that focus on how we look and how we portray ourselves to the outside world. Not sometimes even on social networking sites. You also mentioned dating websites as well, where the focus is more on how you look as opposed to what qualities you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there will ever come a time where this will kind of write itself out, or do you feel it's just the progression is going to get worse and worse? Well, that's an interesting question. It's almost like uh, what's driving the, bu the bus. It's not that people want to portray themselves more provocatively, so Hollywood and our culture at large responds. It's what's driving things is Hollywood's depiction, uh, particularly of women in movies and on television. But about the online dating sites, it's true. I mean, you, when you have a picture, you have something to judge somebody by. And if visual image is extremely impactful yes. on, on the, uh, as much as you try to read, it, you've already formed an impression the second you look at an image. And that's what raises people's self-consciousness and then eventually their self-objectification. Definitely a very thought-provoking article and I encourage everybody to read it. Thank you so much for telling us more about it. Thank you, Elise. It's a pleasure to be here.